Well, I think applying this study to our general U.S. patient population is very problematic, and, and I think there are several reasons for why that is. One is this was a generally young, healthy, white population. So the average age was 41 years old. The average age I see in my practice of patients who actually have cardiovascular disease is easily at least 65. And then we have uh, quite a mix of racial backgrounds, of course, here in the United States. Uh, blacks, in particular, have been known to be much more salt sensitive, and so these results would definitely not apply uh, to that patient population uh, either. Uh, I think the other problem with this study is that these patients already did not have established uh, cardiovascular diseases like high blood pressure or like congestive heart failure. Definitely in those patients, and even the authors acknowledge in their study, they acknowledge that decreasing sodium intake and salt intake helps patients who already have established high blood pressure. Uh, so those are, again, other patient populations that these results would not apply to at all. So increasing your salt intake has been known to have a direct correlation to increasing your blood pressure. And even in this study, the authors found that the blood pressure did increase slightly over the course of follow-up, which was several years, uh, by taking in uh, excess salt. Uh, so that in turn, having high blood pressure over many, many years, uh, ends up causing problems with cardiovascular disease, like heart attacks, like strokes, like congestive heart failure. And again, that's another problem with this study is that they probably have not followed these patients long enough. It was a conclusion in the study that blood pressure did go up in patients who had more salt in their diet. Well, it doesn't take just maybe five, six, seven years to see the uh, events or results of having high blood pressure. It takes 10, 15, 20 years. So if you're 41 years old, they followed these patients until they were less than 50, well, we don't know what's going to happen to these patients when they're 60 and 70 years old. That's when I see them, and they end up having cardiovascular events like stroke, heart attacks, and congestive heart failure. I think it's great that we have such a vast array of knowledge at our fingertips now with the internet and TV and media outlets. The problem is, is that it can become confusing to see conflicting uh, stories and results from different studies, in particular when those are in, uh, in contrast to what your own doctor has told you. What I tell my patients is, please, call me when you see these things and they come out in the news to give your doctor a call and talk to your doctor about it, especially, again, I cannot, I cannot stress, especially if you already have established uh, cardiovascular disease or if you have risk factors like high blood pressure or di diabetes or high cholesterol, I would go over with your doctor, your personal doctor who's prescribing you the medications that you take for those problems and treating you for these problems, go over with your doctor the results and see if they apply to you or not. I think definitely it is clear that less salt is better. It leads to less chance of developing high blood pressure, which in turn decreases your risk of developing the cardiovascular complications of high blood pressure, which again would include uh, stroke, heart failure, or heart attack. So less salt is better would be my bottom line uh, to patients.